my god. You made a song just for TikTok. Yeah, you can come and watch me. Drink my morning coffee. Bradford's mad. I didn't think we'd get along, but turns out we kind of agree on everything. Your, Your racial, racial identity, identity is the most important thing. thing. Everything, everything should, should be looked at through the lens of race. Jinx, you owe me a coke. Damn. We both have a lot of opinions about people of color, even though we barely know any. I say colored people, but as long as we're classifying them, we both think minorities are a united group who think the same and act the same. And vote the same. You don't want to lose your black card. Sorry, I don't know. I just think we should roll, roll back, back discrimination laws so we can hire based on race again. Jinx, now you owe me a coke. Hey, tell them what you told me yesterday. White actors should only do voices for white cartoon characters. Been saying that for years. Stick to your own. Us white people, we have so much privilege. I agree. It is a privilege to be white. Ask him about interracial dating. All I said is that black men who date white women have internalized racism, and white men that date ethnic women are fetishizing them. Guys against interracial dating now. Like, am I being pranked? Go ahead, Katie. So yesterday, a lady that was involved in a car crash actually linked to one of my circle of friends. She died because an ambulance couldn't get through because your protesters just stop oil were blocking the road and the ambulance couldn't get through in time. She couldn't get the help she needed and she died. Earlier you said that you are a peaceful protesters. My friend is dead. How do you answer that? We have a blue light policy, um, which means whenever we have roadblocks, as soon as we um, hear sirens, we see the blue lights, people move out of the way. Even when people are gluing in the road, there's always one lane that is kept um, clear so that people can move out of the way. And we have never had any complaints from either ambulances, fire brigade or any other emergency services. The, to video, us the video footage exists and the lady can't complain now because she's dead. Let me ask you another question, Phoebe. Uh, let me ask you, what bills do you currently pay? Who pays for your accommodation at university? My student loan. Well, have you ever paid any bills in your lifetime? No. So you don't know what it's like to be a homeowner and not to be able to afford your energy bills and then see some stupid young people throwing soup over a painting in a gallery that has nothing to do with the fact they can't afford to pay their bills. You don't know what it's like to pay a bill, Phoebe, do you? No, but I have empathy for those people. What do you understand about an ordinary family who can't afford to pay their fuel bills, who needs ordinary fuel to be delivered, but because of green taxation, their bills are now so expensive they can't afford them? And if we stop oil, how much more expensive do you think fuel is going to be, Phoebe? Or is it that you're just spouting out words that you and your friend think look good? How is it related to stopping oil to throw soup over a painting in a gallery? How is that related? How is it helping the poorest people in my country? Go ahead, Katie. So yesterday, a lady that was involved in a car crash actually linked to one of... If you get a minute, go watch that entire video. I know it's hard to stitch with all that. Here, here's what I will say about this. This is college generation in today's world right here. This girl says it all. I'm going to go to college on somebody else's dime. I've never had to pay a bill. I've never had to take care of somebody else. I've never had to understand the corporate tax systems and what it does. All I have been is someone who receives all of that. And then I'm going to go stand on the street with my little signs. And I'm going to glue my hands and throw soup on million-year-old paintings in fake social justice warrior. I call them social justice keyboard warriors. But yet I've never had to pay a bill in my life. Somebody else takes care of me. So I can go out and scream at you for destroying the earth, but yet I am justified because I go to college and I get indoctrinated by freaking left-wing professors. And I think that I'm doing the world so much justice, but yet I don't even know what it's like to live in that said world. I don't know how to pay any bills. Everybody else's tax dollars pays for me to go to college. I live off my college loans, which somebody else pays for, but yet I... I'm going to stand out there and lecture you, the person who pays for me to go to college, the person who pays my bills. But, you know, she has empathy for those people, but yet never has to actually be an adult, but is going to stand out there on the side of the street and lecture you, the one who's paying all her bills, on what she's doing wrong because of climate change. These social justice keyboard warriors are my favorite. They don't actually know what it's like to be an adult or have to actually be a parent. It has to take care of you. No, but I'm going to sit back and I'm going to lecture you because I've been indoctrinated at college and high school. 
again, I say this all the time. You see it on this app, all these little left wing creators, you know, that have millions of followers and they're they think that they're political analysts all of a sudden, but yet still live at home with mom and dad and have no concept of what the real world is in life. But is going to lecture us who are actually paying the bills for them to go to school and be a social justice keyboard warrior. Make it make sense to me. I keep saying it over and over again. Once TikTok goes away and all of your followers go away, then what? How far is your, you know, political science or your, you know, gender studies degree going to do then? I'm curious to see it. Got to love the fake woke, though. <laughs> awesome, right? Girl, bye. So you own a pencil factory. I'm a worker in that pencil factory. You can have all the machinery, all, you can buy all the raw materials you want, but without me and presumably many others like me to assemble the pencils, all you would have is a pile of wood, yellow paint, graphite, rubber, and aluminum. Okay. That would be worth it. So, and that is worth less than the pencil when you try and sell it. And yet all of that value added by labor, apart from the wages that you give me, which if we're being honest, there is a major power imbalance in our ability to negotiate that. Well, if, 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 all you, if all that putting the pencil together requires is basic use of your prefrontal cortex, then yes, your labor is alienable at lower rates than if you are a doctor. That's not the fault of the person who owns the machinery. But if, all, but if, the, but if you didn't have workers like me and your pencil factory and you were just one man... But I so do. I have millions of people who are willing to do that voluntarily for me. If you're just one person trying to ass like, assemble pencils, you're not going to get very far. You need workers. Capital needs labor infinitely more than labor needs capital. That's why you have worker cooperatives where the workers I are the I fundamentally ones disagree on the distinction between capital and labor. Capital is just a term for money. If you're talking about money, money does not grow from the ground. Money only has value because it was traded for labor at one point or the products of labor. So if I take my money and I buy machinery, I have invested my labor in doing that because I didn't get the money from nowhere. Even if I got it from my parents, my parents didn't get the money from nowhere. The people who built the machines required me to trade something of value to them in order for me to obtain the machines. The people who invented the machines required people to pay them in order to get the, the patent to that machine so they could build the machine. The, the, the problem that I'm seeing in, in what you're saying is you have still failed. If, if what you're talking about is a system of volunteerism, you still have not named any area in which we disagree, and yet you're telling me that you're a socialist and I'm a free marketer. So one of us has got this wildly wrong, and I'm pretty sure it's not me. <laughs> The differentiation I draw, and I'm not alone in this, I'm not one person trying to redefine anything, the differentiation I and many others like me draw between socialism and capitalism is that under capitalism, when you as the owner of the factory you give me a wage. The wage could be seven twenty five, it could be fifteen dollars, it could be whatever an hour. Right. Right? But you, you give me a wage. All all the additional profit above the, uh, made from selling the pencils or whatever good you produce above what is reinvested into the company ultimately goes to you or the investors, the, uh, it goes who own shares in the means of production. Right. Under socialism, those people are the workers. And the example I give, again, is cooperative enterprise. No, those are the people who are investing the risk. So if they carry the risk, then they get the benefit. The owner of the factory carries the risk, therefore he gets the benefit. The workers in the company you mentioned, if that company were to go bankrupt, they would carry the risk as well as the benefit. If the company goes bankrupt, and this guy has to pay off all of his debts, the worker may lose his job, but he's not the one who's going to incur the debt of having gone bankrupt. If you incur risk, then you're the one who pays the downside. The worker does not pay the downside. Okay, it is the investor who pays the downside, who invested in all the machinery, who sunk millions of dollars into making your labor productive. Because guess what? Your labor is without that machinery. Gunk. Nothing. You don't have a pencil to put together. You don't got the wood. You don't got the, you don't got the paint. You don't got the rubber. You don't got the metal. You got nothing. Right? You're sitting there, standing outside, twiddling your thumbs. It required somebody to invest, mil who do you think put more in? The guy who spent millions of dollars buying all the machinery, leasing the place, making sure there was a management structure, doing the LLC formation, making sure all the tax code was in compliance, or you standing outside because you can stick a piece of graphite into a piece of wood? <laughs> now we're done. Not everybody's gonna like what I say, but honestly, I don't care. I don't like you either. White people feel very emboldened right now to not get their vaccine because they've never once had to be held accountable for the amount of disease that they have spread all over the planet. We've waltzed into every region of the world carrying disease and killing off entire communities and groups of people because our inconvenience is more important than their existence. And you don't even understand that because they won't even teach it in school. And the idea that you'd have to go and do some research yourself is terrifying to you. So get your vaccine, wear your mask, and shut the fuck up. I don't care about your feelings.
65% of black people in New York are unvaccinated. And you're white. Who's an emboldened one? Normalize having horrible BO at work. Hygiene is a social construct. Emily Wokerson, professionally offended. If you're not racist, then why do you wear sunscreen? Afraid of getting a little darker? Emily Wokerson, professionally offended. So, do you work out because you care about your health, or are you just fat phobic? Emily Wokerson, follow to say what is when logic white prevails. people are evil, white people suck, we should be ashamed of ourselves, and I don't think we, we should are... be ashamed of ourselves. I think that we should take responsibility for the system that we've created. The best system in the world? Oh, we do not have the best system Who in the world. Who has a better system? There are many European countries that have are much better off. Oh, than you us. mean like the European countries with a higher density of whites, like Northern Europe? Uh, that's one way to phrase it, I guess. You don't mean Turkey. No. <laughs> you don't mean Eastern Europe. No. With the communists. So the only time you can come up with a system that's better than America, it's a country that's more white than America. I love everybody who's defending the gas prices right now. Well, other countries have it a lot worse. <laughs> Man, uh, I'm happy I found you. Defending gas prices? Yeah. Who? Who's def who's def who's defending gas prices? Like, what does that look like? Like. Like I say, it's five dollars is too much. No, it's not. It's right price. Like, like, what, what, what do you mean by defending the gas prices? Say, I think you're confused. Okay, we're not defending gas prices. We're just correcting you, potatriots, when when you kind of blame Biden, because that would be socialism. That's what type of country we'd live in. We live in capitalism on the free market. Using leftist logic to expose their own hypocrisy and double standards is quickly becoming one of my favourite pastimes. So the leftist definition of racism is prejudice plus power. You have to have power to be racist. And they tweak the definition of racism to suit their rhetoric because they like to make the argument that ethnic minorities cannot be racist towards white people. Now, of course, we all know that's absolute nonsense. That's not the definition of racism at all. It's got nothing to do with power. But for the sake of this argument, let's pretend that their logic is correct. And the definition of racism is prejudice plus power. So that would mean then, leftists, that white people in South Africa can't be racist towards black people because the president of South Africa is black. The majority of the population is black. So there is certainly no power there for white people. So you would have to agree with that, that a white South African can't be racist towards a black South African. Even look at the UK. There are some areas of London where white British people are the minority. The mayor of London isn't white. So in those areas, white people also couldn't be racist towards people of other ethnic origins because they don't have the power. Or Leicester, for example, where the white British population is 45%, so a minority. So white people can't be racist there either. In fact, anywhere in the UK that's got a black or Asian mayor or MP, the white people there can't be racist because they don't have the power. But you wouldn't agree with that, would you, leftists? You would not support that at all. So this exposes one of the many things that exposes your hypocrisy and your double standards and your anti-white narrative. Anyone can be racist towards anybody else. And if you support the argument that a certain race cannot possibly be the perpetrators of racism, then you are racist. Not too long ago, I was coming home from a show, driving home with my cousin. We got to the middle of the hood, we're almost home, with this intersection, right? And uh, 
it's completely blocked off. I know it's a crowd of white kids completely blocking off the intersection. And they're all holding up signs and screaming out, fuck racism, fuck racism. And guys, as the first generation son of an illegal Mexican immigrant, trust me, I am totally down for the cause. But if anybody should understand real estate terminology, it's you, because location, location, location. Right? You are in the middle of a black and Latino neighborhood screaming out, fuck racism. We're like, yeah, we know. Why are you yelling at us? It is nine o'clock on a Wednesday and you have blocked off traffic, thereby preventing us from going on about our lives. This is pretty impressive, guys. I don't know. You're not doing it right. My cousin saw this, she's like, what do we do? I'm like, I don't know, just chant with them. Maybe they'll let us through. We're like, fuck racism! Yeah, fuck racism! But like, I'm Mexican, so can I get through? Or... And then he's responding back, like, yeah, fuck racism! But sorry, amigo, you gotta go around. Gonna... Like, Moses parting the white sea? No. They don't even understand the irony of this situation, guys, all right? You got two brown people in a car. And you have formed a wall, thereby preventing us from getting home to our families, right? And I gotta be up at five o'clock in the morning to mow your dad's lawn. <laughs> so maybe you understand how I feel when I say, I am sick of these middle class, woke ass white kids trying to tell me how the fuck I should feel about racism. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Middle class, woke ass white kids laughing at that thing. Like, no, no, welcome to our neighborhood. I enjoy Starbucks. <laughs> Uh, everyone, uh, today today we're going to be tackling what, it, what is one of the most fundamental, yet one of the most demanding drawing exercises that any aspiring artist may undertake. We're, we're going to be sketching the female nude today, uh, but I'm going to ask you not to focus on portraiture so much at this point. Just focus on, on, on lines and shadow and form, okay? Uh, Sylvia, if you'll please. Hey, 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 yes, hey, yes. hey! Yes, yes. Excuse me, Mr. Dwyer, but, uh... I, uh, I took this class to learn how to sketch, not to ogle some poor female yeah, yeah. nude. Oh, well, well, this isn't about ogling. No, no, we're just going to uh, uh, observe line and, and, and shadow and form. And, and we're going to use economic repression to once again exploit a woman's body. Yeah. Well, I, I don't think that's what we're doing here. No? No. Excuse me. Uh, sister, are you being paid? Yes. I rest my case. Okay, well, of course she's being paid. She's a professional artist model. I... I see no reason why we shouldn't use her. <laughs> use her? Use her? You know, I wish you could hear yourself, sir. Remember, language is a virus. Well, I, 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 I certainly didn't mean to infect anyone. I... <laughs> That's no excuse. Sexism in any context is never appropriate. Yes. But what about our charcoal technique? Oh, no. oh, don't change the subject here, sir. This class is a travesty. That poor woman child is just another victim of the patriarchy. She is? I, I am? Hate crime. Hate crime. Not only that, it is also a racist construct. This woman represents the same white image of beauty that has oppressed women for centuries. Hate crime. Hate crime. Where are the nude models of color? The people of girth. The handicapable, the elderly, the queer. Well, I'm sorry, it's just naked, fat, black, crippled dykes are hard to find. <laughs> I, 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 I'm sorry I said that. I, I apologize. You, know, you white male, stop trying to co-op my black anger. I'm just trying to understand your black anger. Show it to me again. Shut up! Thank you, I understand now. <laughs> Sir? You leave me only one alternative. I must walk out and call for a boycott of your classes. Anybody who stays is obviously a racist. Or a homophobe. Shut up! Well, you know, th these issues are certainly valid, and I, uh, we could have a, dis a discussion. Bye. Well, okay. What isn't in your name? What isn't my name? This increasing move towards discrimination, racism, misogyny. You know, the, we're the other 98% whatever. The 98% of what? We're the other 98%. Well, 53% of women voted for Donald Trump. I know, it's very sad. So 98% of who? Go and interview someone else. That's a shame. Tired cold. That's that's what we're up against. Here's a hot take. Are people actually more sensitive nowadays or 
or are they just so i would have to say both this generation reminds me of um the generations from the 50s and 60s that push for change because believe it or not it was the young people that pushed that the only difference between you guys now is that you push for the things people are very uncomfortable about you see black people fought for the injustices of black people which we still do today but you guys go deep into family and how your parents are raising you and how they're treating you and the injustices that happen within the school systems and things of that nature like you guys go against things that people didn't really really touch on you know back in the day like that so you're both and, and, and I think it's a commendable thing because um you're, you're you seem to be a, a wiser generation and you all really really seek knowledge so you're both Hakuna Matona Ashe family, welcome to another edition of Woke Brother Felix Woke Thought. Today we will be breaking down this devilish challenge known as the Milk Crate Challenge. Some of your third eyes are in retrograde if you believe the CIA dropped these in the hood. The actual person was the Illuminati, the ancestors sent it to me via ancestral email that the Illuminati is behind the Milk Crate Challenge. Break down family, the black crates have been put together, jailed, and oh, there's a blue one. The black and blue people of the earth have been jailed together so that the oppressor can challenge themselves standing on our backs. But if you open your fourth and fifth hyperdiagnosis kundalini, you will see that anytime they get to the top and we dissipate, they will fall for the gravitate. Now, what does crate stand for? Community renegade attack the energy of the oppressor. What kind of a fucking idiot white person refers to themselves as woke? If you, if you actually were socially conscious, you'd realize that white people stole that word from black people. Once again, doing the Elvis thing. But you know what? I blame black people for that. One of them fucked up. They were at a party, there was white people there, and they let it slip out. Stay woke, however the fuck you say it. And some white person heard it like, ah, oh, is that? Stay woke? I wanna say that. I gotta say that around my white friends so they know that I'm down. Oh my god, I'm gonna fucking say that. I fucking had it. I've had it. I support black people in my white apartment on Twitter. That's what I do. Every white person likes to lie to themselves that they were alive, you know, 150 years ago, that they would have been working on the Underground Railroad trying to help slaves escape. I would have taken time out of my day, risked my life, and the reality is, is you'd be doing back then exactly what you're doing today. Nothing. Maybe a little hashtag, Black Lives Matter. Oh my God, I, my heart breaks on my L-shaped couch. Oh boy. <laughs> Assigning it a gender already? Wow. Uh, You're not gonna let it choose. Well, no matter what he identifies as, we will always love him. It. What? You'll love it no matter what. It's not an it, it's my baby. Right. It's a baby. Steve, make her stop. I'm naming my baby. <laughs> It'll live in the metaverse raised by Mark Zuckerberg, and when it turns 18, it can choose which reality it wants to live in. So you're actually having it? Are you not pro-choice? My entire life I've been told that socialism is a bad thing. When in reality, ending socialism means ending programs like Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. Ending guaranteed public education, fire departments, police departments, public transportation, public university, public parks, public libraries, essentially anything that is public. Socialism is the fire department saving your house. Capitalism is the insurance company denying your claim. In the South, we're taught that Democrats are the lazy people who don't want to work and just want government handouts. That is a Republican lie. When it comes to money that goes into and comes out of the government, red states are the real freeloaders. This is a list of states that get more than they give. Blue states are the least dependent. This is a list of states that give more than they get. You want to know which county has the largest per capita usage of food stamps? Owsley, Kentucky. It's 99% white, 95% Republican, and 96% utilize food stamps. These politicians who run around saying they want to fight the evil left socialist agenda are socialist hypocrites, corporate bootlickers, and anti-democratic fascists. They have no problem with all of the socialist safety nets that benefit the rich. They want to get rid of all of the socialist programs that benefit the working class. Republicans, you are being played. And if you want to call me woke, go ahead. I consider it a huge compliment. <laughs> you and I both know that you are capable of enjoying the rain 
and frolicking freely without filming it and then posting it to TikTok. Now, you've just co-signed, okay? You've just co-signed at least 3 million, 8.5 by 11 front and back people who just go out of their way to disrespect and dismiss the boundaries that black creators have set. And now you're one of those people. So, I guess my question would be, why? Why, would, why is it so important to all of you to treat us like we don't matter? Whenever you can go out into the rain, do not miss the opportunity! <laughs> Actress Drew Barrymore posted a video on TikTok of herself frolicking in the rain. And then a black creator on TikTok said the video was racist. Yep, that's what we're doing in 2022. Let me explain. So for the past few months on TikTok, black creators, specifically black men, have been posting videos of themselves frolicking. God! I'm frolicking. Why y'all ain't tell me we was frolicking? I'm about to watch. Oh, we frolicking? That's what we do? We frolicking? Let me get my frolic going. The idea behind this trend is frolicking is something you don't normally associate with black culture. So seeing black men do it is just funny and entertaining. It's also a representation of black male joy or what we call black boy joy, even though it's mostly men doing it, not boys. And then Drew Barrymore decided to post this video to TikTok. <laughs> And that made this black creator on TikTok accuse Drew Barrymore of being racist for hopping on a trend that black creators started and not giving them any credit for it. Okay, so there's so much wrong with this. First of all, the whole reason why this trend was popular was because black creators were doing something not really associated with black culture. Frolicking isn't really associated with any culture, but it's more associated with white culture than black culture. So you're saying Drew Barrymore is culturally appropriating by doing something that black creators were doing that they got from white culture? So she's culturally appropriating from her own culture? That doesn't make any sense. And although there are many similarities between her video and the original trend, Drew Barrymore doesn't actually say she's frolicking here. It just looks like she's enjoying the rain. I just don't see the connection here. To be fair, libs of TikTok is being very misleading here. This creator is not saying that frolicking in the rain is racist. She's saying Drew Barrymore stole a trend from black culture. That being said, I still fully disagree with this creator's argument here. Look guys, there are some very egregious forms of cultural appropriation in which white people stole things from black culture. Elvis is a good historical example. A more recent example would be Vanilla Ice in the 1990s. But this right here, this ain't one of them. When you claim everything is racist, it makes it look like nothing is really racist. And it makes it that much harder for us to pinpoint real racism and discrimination online or anywhere else for that matter. So what do you all think? Does this creator have any legs to stand on here when it comes to these allegations about Drew Barrymore being racist? Or is this all just really, really ridiculous? What is one way you combat racism on a daily basis? I'll go first. I don't move for white people on the sidewalk. Hey, baby. Yeah? Yeah, you won't believe this shit. They figured it out. Figured what out? Racism. They figured out how to end it. This guy, I think he's a guy, he, he doesn't move out of the way on the sidewalk for white people. It's fucking genius. I don't think any of us saw this coming. I think if you'd have said to me or any of us 15 years ago, you know, we are going to reach the point very soon when the police are investigating people for non-crime and they're doing that they're investigating thousands of people a year arresting people for jokes they tell uh, we're going to reach a point where science journals are going to start talking about how sex is a spectrum and you know uh, you know people are going to have to declare their pronouns before meetings or that people would lose their jobs for saying that sex is real or that people will be trained in corporate sessions that if they are white they are inherently racist um no one would have believed that this would have happened no one I, I don't think any, even the people who later became the activists, no one would have thought. So it's like the emergence of a brand new religion that no one could anticipate. Um, and that means, I mean, that's scary in a way, because since this only happened in the past 12 years, and it spreads largely by intimidation, people are scared, so they go along with it. And that's how all terrible movements of the past have, have operated. And the problem is, if it, if it arises so quickly, where's it going to go next? Where are we going to be in 12 years? It's going to be things that you and I possibly can't anticipate, unless... Unless we take a stand and we push back and we stop. Coming soon to a country near you. A radical plan to crack down on social media abuse is being considered by the federal government. For more nines, Oliver Haig joins us live in Adelaide. Ollie, how will it work? Well, 
Lila, good morning. Essentially, it will work the same as a passport. Australians forced to submit 100 points of identification, like their driver's licence or passport, when using social media accounts like Facebook and Twitter. Now, police would have access to those social media accounts, and it's all part of a crackdown on online abuse. Now, users could be liable for defamation suits or even criminal prosecution. And it's all part of a plan hoping to deter people from engaging in bad behaviour. Now, the recommendations were handed down by a federal parliamentary inquiry. They're reforms that are being considered by the Morrison government, with the chairman saying there is merit to remove to remove uh, the veil of being anonymous. Layla? So this was the news in Australia, and we all know it's not for abuse. It's for control. And if you don't think it's going to come here, you're mistaken. They're trying to get everyone ready for just like the Chinese has a social credit score. And if you do something they don't like, well, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. Let's get this straight. Your Stop Woke Act prevents college professors from bringing up woke subjects like the idea that racism has pervaded social and legal structures. Yes. Okay, so that's obviously against the First Amendment. I could do that with my eyes closed. That's against the First Amendment, see? Against the First Amendment, how? You're the government preventing college professors from speaking freely on political subjects you disagree with. That's infringing on free speech, yes, because of course it is. No, you don't understand. I was threatening to fire teachers for bringing up subjects that my political viewpoints don't align with for the common good. We need to stop saying shoot when we're asking someone to send us a DM. Stop saying shoot. Stop saying shooting. Stop saying shot. I'm fully aware that if the If I only could make a deal with God to stop all this gun violence in my D. I don't want to talk about that. Yeah, no, no, no. What, do you really like animals, miss? Yes, do. You do? Which ones is, are your favorite? Every animal? That's sweet. Every single animal. They all have life. They all have life. You're right. They don't all need to. I feel like you haven't experienced enough life or death situations with animals. Do you think an animal cares about your life? You think a polar bear is going, you know what? She's probably got backgammon on Tuesday. Maybe I won't eat her. I'm just going to sit here with this Coca-Cola and sip it with my nephews. How to explain to other cultures like the way it is now. My buddy moved back from Pakistan. He was like, what happened in North America in the last three years? He's like, every magazine, the girl's overweight. Do you just love that? And you're like, no, not really. But you have to pretend you do or you get trouble on Facebook. Um, <laughs> very complicated to be alive with all the opinions you need to pretend to have right now. <laughs> Even doctors don't want to say fat. They'd be like, listen, if you could be 30% less brave, um, that'd be great. <laughs> if we get your levels of, you go girl. <laughs> not to just, you go girl, you know. <laughs> If we look here in your height to empowerment chart, um, you're getting very close to morbidly courageous. This is the neighborhood, and you are not welcome. That's why I need to be here. You need Jesus, ma'am. I, I spit on corporations. They, they are they are woke and and they are abusive of uh, of labor at the same time. So you're not going to get any defense from me or any conservative of big corporations. I can't stand them. The fact that Disney will not even allow people uh, at the at, at, at their amusement parks to say boys and girls anymore gives you an idea of how sick they have become in the wokeness of this non-binary evil. And that I do believe is evil. To tell little children, you, are, you, you don't know if you're a boy or a girl until you decide. Do you think that's healthy? I think it's unhealthy think to it's spend the amount of time you girl. spend in judging decisions that parents make about their own children. I think no, it's none of your business. I don't think it's anyone's business. And schools parents are not doing not anything close to what the right wing is describing. Okay. I mean, it is amazing because you talk about Alan Dershowitz, who had written a column in the New York Times about how it should be okay to have sex with underage girls, okay? Uh, you don't call him a groomer, but you'll call our educators who have have done nothing wrong, just want to 
create an environment that's welcoming to all students. You'll call them groomers, you'll defame them as some sort of sexual predators, and it's unacceptable.